I'm going to share a couple of annotations, which is going to make your uh, life simple when you're dealing with large tests, right? Large code bases, huge number of tests. How do you manage your tests? So there are a couple of annotations which let you uh, scale it well and also handle your development process. How are you going to be working on these tests while you develop? Uh, the first annotation that I'm going to teach you is display name. It's a very silly, simple annotation, but uh, I've seen uh, places where it's recommended and kind of like a, a coding practice, right? You are expected to put the display name on your test. Uh, the way display name works is uh, it, you know, here, if you open your uh, JUnit console, you see here the name display is your method names, right? Whatever is the name of your method gets displayed over there. What if you want to have a nice uh, visual feedback about what your method is doing? For that, I use a display name annotation. So let's say I use a display name annotation for add. I'm going to say at display name testing add method. And of course, import display name from our Jupyter API. It's it's the same. It's the same package where all these things run. Executed. Ah, it failed because I removed the static. I'm gonna get rid of the uh, the before all here. And also the after each. This was just for testing purposes. Save and run this again. See this? It looks a bit better. And uh, it's handy when you have a lot of tests and you kind of need some kind of um, a hint about what the test is. So it's especially handy when things fail and you look at the red and you want to know what the method is doing. This gives you a clear indicator. So it's, it's a handy thing to do. And again, like I said, I've seen places where the coding convention is all of your tests need to have display name. So it's a handy thing to have. Uh, the next annotation that I'm going to show you is um, disabled. Disabled is also going to come in handy. It's come in handy for me when I was writing test-driven development. So let's say you're doing TDD, right? Test-driven development, you've written your tests, and you know that it fails until the actual functionality is implemented. But guess what? You're stuck now. Uh, you cannot check in your code because anytime the build runs, it's going to run your failed test, and then it's going to fail. So disabled is a way to handle that. All right, so what I've done here is I've created a test method. Let's say this is test disabled, and uh, I'm using fail here to deliberately fail this method. All right, this is a work in progress, so I don't want this test to run. So let's say I've written some code over here, but at the end I put a fail because I know that this method shouldn't run. And then uh, also, let me also put a T test driven development method should not run, right? So I'm making all this very clear, but then if I were to execute this, this is going to fail, right? Because I have a fail there and this test should not pass. So the make the way to make this work is to use the at disabled. If I were to spell it right, then import this. I'm guessing from the same package. Yep, run the same package. And now what's gonna happen is it's not going to pass the test, right? There is a distinction here. It actually skips the test. You notice here there is this uh, this circle with uh, an, a line here like this. It doesn't have a failure trace because guess what? This did not run. It's not going to say it's passed, but it, it's an indicator to tell you that, hey, this is something that's in progress, should not be run. So anybody who sees this will know that that's exactly what's happening. And then you're free to write your actual functionality and testing it locally by, by removing this line. And when it's ready to go, you check it in without the add disabled annotation. Does it make sense? This is how, uh, this is very handy when you're doing test-driven development, like I said, it's, it helps you iterate and uh, make, keep making changes while not affecting the actual build output.